All right, guys, on today's video, I'm going to show you how on these Yealink IP phones, if they've got an administrative password on here preventing you from doing a factory reset or overriding the firmware, uh, how you can do that. Now, this is a T42S, but what I'm going to show you is going to be very similar for any of the T4 models and probably a lot of the T5 models. I'm going to zero this guy in or zoom this guy in rather so we can get past the glare on the backlighting. Now normally to do a factory reset on something like this you just hold the OK button down in between the directional keys for about six to eight seconds and you would get prompted on whether you wanted to reset to factory settings. And you would press the OK key again and it would start going. But in this case it's prompting for a password. What happened here is the service provider, when they provisioned the phone, they changed the default password or they applied a password that's not obvious. Now you can try doing admin admin here. So A D M I N, but that almost never works, but it's always worth a shot. So what can you do if you don't know the admin password? You can't factory reset it and you can't update the firmware in this condition. Well, you're going to want to get a USB key and you're going to want to format it to FAT32 and you're going to want to install it in the back of this guy and you want to do that formatting on Windows because that's probably the only operating system this guy is going to recognize and you want to see that it says USB connected right so that means it can detect the USB key that you formatted it okay and then we're going to go over here to the menu and we're going to walk down to the very bottom to USB record and all we want to do is make sure that we can see the USB storage space. So that means that we've got the USB key formatted properly to do what we're going to do today, which is a, a factory firmware recovery. We're going to put the phone into recovery mode. We're going to boot firmware from this USB key that we've properly formatted. So now let me show you where you're going to get the contents for this USB key. You're going to end up having to get three files from Yealink. And you're also going to have to get the, uh, the uh, MAC address removed off of something called the Remote Provisioning Database. And I'm going to show you how to do both of those. And then we're going to come back and I'll show you after we get those three files in this key how we actually reset the phone. All right, to get those three files that you'll need for that USB key that you formatted and tested, we're going to need to go to the Yealink support website. I'm going to suggest you find it through Google because there are a few malware type fakes of this particular company's website. I'm going to take Yealink support and then when it comes up here we're going to enter the model number of the phone. In our case it's a SIP T42S. Alright, there's three files we need. Uh, the first one we're going to go after is a ROM file. The other two are a bin file and I believe it's an RFS file. Go to the firmware tab and these are the ROM files. Now, you're going to want to get the version of the firmware or the ROM file that is newer than but closest to the firmware that's currently on the phone. And you can figure out the firmware that's currently on the phone by going into that same menu I showed you for the USB uh, record and at the very top on status. And that'll tell you the, ROM, uh, the firmware version. So in our case, it's a 66.84.25.3. And the closest one would be this 6685.3. .0.5. Now you see there's a lot of gaps on these and the reason for that is there can be special firmwares that are given out by certain service providers as well as firmwares that are sent by tech support to fix a particular problem. These are the public firmwares and so this is what we want to go with. Now you can't just jump to the latest depending on how old this is. It'll crap out if you try to do that. You kind of have to walk up eventually working your way up to the newest if you want to go all the way up to the newest one they have here. But we're going to download this 8505 one. That's one of the files we need. The other two we're going to find by going over to the outside here that are cut off on our browser view. We're going to go to this FAQ tab. We're going to go under SIP phone. Dismiss some of this other stuff out of the way and then we're going to go to upgrade. Now there's a bunch of information on here. Uh, typically the way you would how to get a recovery file, typically the way you do it is you could open a ticket. Now we're going to need to do a ticket for something else, but we can avoid doing a ticket for this because if you scroll down further in this information, you'll find some links. Now these first links, you want to skip these. These are just um, special versions of the ROM files. And we're going to take the better ones that I showed you earlier. But if we scroll past this, we can talk about the recovery mode. And this is the link to the bin and RFS files. 
So now we'll come down, find the T42S right here, and we'll click on this link and download the zip file, and that'll give us the other two of these files. Now, it's not as simple as two files. There's a whole bunch in here, and I'll explain what the differences are, but those are the files. Now, the next thing we gotta do is we gotta get off this uh, remote provisioning database. We're gonna click the ticket feature up here. We're gonna skip this. Now, you're gonna need to um, create an account on the website in order to do this. Close this and get this out of the way. This RPS Mac removal is what you're going to want to do, but you can't use this feature because this requires you to have an account on this particular system. And if you're watching this video, you don't have that because if you did, you wouldn't have a problem with this admin password. Instead, you're going to create a ticket where you're going to ask a quick question. And when you go ask a quick question here, and again, you got to log in, so there's, there's, there's nothing I can do to actually process this, but it should at least let me show you the fields No, I guess not. It's not going to let me show you the fields unless logged in. When you go in here, though, you're just going to say that you want to have a Mac uh, and serial number removed from the RPS database, the Remote Provisioning Service database. That'll prevent the phone from phoning home to Yealink and then going out to the previous service provider and re-downloading the configuration, including this custom admin password. A lot of times people go through the steps I, I showed you with those three files, and then they boot the phone up, connect it to the internet, and it goes right back to the state it was in before. You gotta get it off this database to prevent that. You'll be able to do that even if you uh, have an out of warranty phone like this T42S, as long as you can verify and prove that you're the current owner, right? Um, in case the phone's stolen, they're gonna ask you some questions. You're gonna need to get through and provide that you have purchased the phone legitimately. And as long as you pr purchase the phone legitimately, you'll be able to get it pulled from this database. All right, so let's go ahead, process that ticket, let it cook in the background. They only answer Monday through Friday. Remember when you fill this ticket out, fill it out as a normal priority. You, you don't have a, a, a warranty with these guys and you don't have an account with these guys. So they're doing you a huge favor by responding to this ticket in the first place. Type off that it's a normal priority. Um, when they get in there and they ask you for who your service provider is, if, since you don't have one, obviously, pick Yay Link meetings and explain in the ticket that you purchased the phones and you don't know who the current service provider is. All right, let's go show how to put the files for the USB key together. All right, after you download these files, you'll be left with these two. I'm going to go ahead and extract the zip to this USB key. And what you'll find after you get all these unpacked, you've got a lot of information here. So there's four directories with versions and you'll find in these directories are the bin and the RFS files, but there's four of them. If you go pull up the readme file, what you'll find is that you've got to figure out the date the phone was made to figure out which of these to use. Uh, yeah, it's a huge, ordeal here. That's why I made a, a video for this to help you, right? So if you scroll down here, we're looking at a, t this tells you how to read the serial number to figure out when the phone was manufactured. We're going to scroll down here to the T42S section right here. And they're basically saying use, this is the version used depending on when the phone date match is newer and close to the manufacturing date. So the phones we have were manufactured in 2021. Most any phone from 2017 forward is going to use this 65.0.0.4 folder. But if you do have an older phone, that's what these three are. The video I'm doing should cover all of these models, even though I'm just showing the T42S. So now if I go back to that folder and we open that up, you can see there's these two files. Now what you're going to have to do to, to make this usable is you're going to have to rename these, right? So you rename them to T42S. You rename them to whatever your model number is. That's when you um, boot to USB. That's the file name that this phone is going to be looking for for these two files. And then we're just going to go ahead and copy these to here. Well, actually, my bad, guys. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do it to here. And then I'm going to go rename the ROM file similarly. And now there's my three files. So I don't need the zip file anymore. 
And now that I got everything out of here, I don't need this folder. But before I get rid of it, I'm going to show you some information in this other PDF. So if we go in this guy, this is basically a summary of what we're doing in the video about using the USB flash drive to do this recovery. And here is the section where you can find out for the particular phone model what files you need and what their file names need to be. And as you can see, in some cases, some phones only have two files, but this T42S has three. And you can see they have to be named this way with the name of the model number in capitals followed by the extension. And that's only if the firmware is lower than this version 86 comment, because otherwise you don't need these two files anymore and it's just the ROM file. But we have a version 66 as the first two digits, so that's why we needed all of these. And that's why we named them the way you saw me name them. So now if we go back over here, now I don't need this anymore. I can go ahead and get rid of this. And that's the contents that we're going to want to have on the USB key, just these three files. When we stick it back in the phone and boot from it, do a firmware recovery. All right, now that we've got our USB key populated, how do we get it into recovery mode? Well, there's two ways to power up these phones. You can hook up a power over Ethernet RJ45 cable here, or you can use the AC adapter that the phones came with. What I'm going to suggest here is that you want to use the AC adapter only because if you use an internet connection and the phone's able to phone home, it's going to overwrite the configuration and put the password back on there in most cases. So you want to use the AC adapter only. If you do use the uh, PO, uh, Power of Ethernet or PoE, make sure it's a switch that's not connected to the internet if you have to go that route. Now before I plug this in, what we're going to want to do on the front here is we're going to run a, take this speaker phone button and we're going to hold it in. We're going to hold it in while we power it on. So we're going to hold this key in. We're going to put in the power cable. And as it boots up here you got two menu items. TFTP and USB. Now technically you should be able to do this over TFTP but what I found is this particular phone's got a really old firmware on it and it just complains about every TFTP server I've tried. So I ended up going USB, and that's what I decided to make the video about because it's much more reliable. So we're just going to hit 2 for USB. It's going to say Start Updating. It's going to start booting the two files that we got off the special Yay link link, and then it's going to start downloading the ROM file. So you just have to give it a moment to get to that point. Alright, so at this point it's getting ready to download that ROM file. There it goes. Now once this guy gets to 100%, and it starts installing. Now the installation is going to take anywhere from 2 to 4, sometimes 5 minutes. Depends on the model of phone. So I'm going to leave it on here, but I'll fast forward through this. All right, so now she's rebooting. And give it a moment to reboot, reboot up and get to the menu. This point will be on the firmware level we put on the USB key. All right, so there we are. So now you can see all the menu empty and entries are cleared out. I'm just going to say OK here. Everything's been reset. Now I'm going to hold that OK key in again, just like we did at the beginning of the video. This time it says, do you want to reset the factory settings? I'm going to hit it again, which is a yes. And you see now it's going through and resetting to factory settings. So we cleared off that administrative password. We got all of the service provider settings removed. And we got the MAC address and serial number removed from Yaylink's remote provisioning service database. So when we do reconnect this to the internet, 
it should not be able to go and phone home and put that password back on here and, and reconfigure whatever the previous service provider configuration was. It should be ready to uh, reprovision with a new service provider. So we're going to wait to this uh, factory reset completes here. That's going to prompt another reboot. But at this point, you're done. So if you were just trying to get these ready to resell for yourself, to refurbish, you're done. You're ready to do that. If this is something that you purchase for your own use, at this point, you're ready to contact your service provider. You've basically got a brand new out-of-the-box condition phone at this point, and you can just follow the standard provisioning instructions from your, I, your SIP provider. So I'm just going to wait until it gets to the menu, but basically we're done. And you can see there, we're all set. So guys, I hope this helps you out. If you have this kind of a situation and you need to get these phones into a, into a, a, a refurbishing state or back to a factory configuration state, if you've got questions or comments on this procedure, go ahead and leave them below. I'll try to help. If you found this useful, it saved you some money, you got your phones working on an otherwise dead deal, I'd appreciate you paying it forward by hitting that like button. And as always, thanks for watching.